Welcome back, everyone. You know, I'm beginning to believe that Saratoga is a city that never sleeps. Uh, between just covering the city council meetings, watching the pace at which this city moves and is being developed, and just this recent referendum on the change in government, man alive. Well, there's an issue out there. I mentioned it a couple of times earlier called net neutrality. Net neutrality has to do with equal access to the internet. It's a big deal in Congress and with the FCC. Well, lo and behold, Michelle Madigan, our Commissioner of Finance here in Saratoga Springs, happened to mention that she was involved in it. So I wanted to invite her in so we could discuss this issue and discuss this city's involvement. So welcome, Michelle. Thanks for having me here again today, Jesse. Oh, it's terrific to have you back again. Uh, net neutrality, I'll just set the stage. Net neutrality really means what the name says, that you have equal and fair access to the in internet. It's neutral, no, it's not pay for play, that everyone has equal access to the internet. Well, there's a move at the FCC right now to play with that. Let's, let's, let's be uh, generous of spirit here. To play with this so that it could be, uh, the term is tiering, meaning that at different levels for different pay, you have different access. Um, what, uh, what bothers you about that? Uh, so many things bother me about that. Um, as a librarian, as a local mm. government official, I believe we have to ensure that we maintain the open internet order of 2015 that was passed under the Obama administration. It's very important. We don't want internet service providers acting as gatekeepers to our access to information. And as you said, providing like tiered, you know, this much for Facebook, this much for this kind of content, this much for basic internet at this very slow speed. But if you want a faster speed, you know, you can pay double, more. more. Right. It's all about paying more. Um, and you know, we have people of different economic vulnerabilities and I feel that everyone should have equal access to information, equal access to the internet. Now, I'm going to drill down a little bit more because this has a lot to do with an initiative that Michelle and her, uh, her team are working on called Smart City Initiative. But before we get there, you're not the only one. Um, there are many cities, municipalities, townships all across the country that feel the same way. Uh, you've decided to join forces with some of them. Yes, we sent a letter to Chairman Ajit Pai at the FCC um, encouraging him to maintain that 2015 order. Uh, we did this with local mayors and city councils, towns, villages, counties from throughout the country. We all care very much about this issue. We think this is an important local economy issue. The internet is driving a lot of our innovation, um, a lot of our economic development. So it's very important for state governments, local governments, county governments to have a say, a role in how the um, internet inf broadband is delivered to our communities. Right. I've got a copy of this, by the way. It's like five pages long. It's, uh, it's really, really comprehensive. Many people refer to this as the railroad tracks of the future. Uh, imagine, if you will, one train has permission to go faster than another train. Oh, by the way, the cars behind that train might have proprietary content for the people that profit the most from allowing that train to go faster. You can see where this heads. So the, uh, it's called net neutrality. And I really, really encourage you, contact your uh, politicians, go to FCC.org and make your voices heard. Believe it or not, in two days, they're going to be voting on this legislation. Now, let's... Uh, Again, I was really, really pleasantly surprised how involved you were with understanding this issue mm -hmm. and getting the city involved in locking arms with other cities mm -hmm. and other municipalities to try to get the voice yes. heard on this. This has a lot to do with the Smart City Initiative that you started a couple of years ago. Bring us up to date on Smart City Initiative why you started that and where we stand. So it is a commission that includes all the various CIOs um, in our city, from the hospital to the public library, Empire State College, Skidmore, some of our local tech companies, some of the CIOs there. And we meet regularly and we talk about the importance and the value of having high speed internet access for all under the, uh, the Smart Cities Commission. Um, there are a number of projects we're moving forward on. We're hoping to continue to make Saratoga Springs an attractive community for tech companies and want to 
come here and invest, bring their innovation, bring their economic development ideas. What's important to that is an open internet. Um, you know, finding ways to deliver more fiber, more high speed, becoming a gig city, if you will. I mean, that's my ultimate goal. Um, and you know, we have a plan that we hope to be able to achieve this. Uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult if we only have, say, a few gatekeepers allowed to control access to the internet for a community, a state, a county. Yes, got you. Uh, one of those is an RFP that's gone out, number of companies to get bids to make certain that the city, uh, geographically the boundaries of the city of Saratoga, uh, fiber is laid throughout the city to increase speed of access uh, for every, everyone here in the city, hence gig city, mm -hmm. right? Um, but also the Smart City Initiative isn't only concerned with the internet. Uh, Solar Park is a prime example. Uh, tell us about exactly. that. Exactly. Being smart is really about doing anything more efficiently and better. Um, solar is a big deal. Uh, you know, we're going to, we believe as a result of the 2.5 megawatt solar array, there's almost 8,000 panels out there. We are already generating energy. We are already saving money. We are already mm -hmm. being better citizens, the city overall, by reducing our carbon footprint. But there's a number of other smart things we can do. Replacing all of our street lights with LED light, lights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a lot about looking at how we use energy just in our different facilities, our buildings throughout the city. And we can do this as residents as well. Um, energy is kind of key. Uh, looking at these, uh, the smart cars that are out there now, the electric vehicles, having more electric vehicle charging stations. You're going to see more of those coming throughout the city. We already have initiatives moving forward to do that. All of these things are considered smart, and all of them are part of the Smart City Roadmap. Boy, it's very much future. Hence, the city that doesn't sleep. <laughs> what do you do when you sleep? Jump in place or something? I, mean, I, I think I'm like processing and thinking all night long. <laughs> all night long, yeah. <laughs> I bet you are. Uh, Michelle, uh, thank you very much for coming in and, and shedding some more light on this. I've got one question. We've just got a, another minute of, of time available. Uh, we were very involved here at Look Media with the referendum for change in form of government in Saratoga. 9,000 votes were cast roughly. Uh, the difference came down to a margin of fewer than 10 votes. Uh, you were on here a number of times talking about what you felt about it. Uh, you're very articulate in explaining your position on it. Uh, the dust is now settling. Let's, let's say it's completely settled, but the dust is just about settled. What's your takeaway? Well, 10 votes is not a lot. We have a community that's <laughs> divided, say. right? So um, it does look as though the commission form of government will remain. Um, but throughout the entire campaign, I was also very clear that I thought that this charter needed a very serious look. So my commitment is to the people that we will start to address some of the deficiencies of this particular charter and start to move the city forward to being more efficient so that perhaps the next time a big proposal like this comes along, um, it won't be such a big infrastructure change. It won't cost so much money. Um, I always said to you, Jesse, that I'm of the mentality where you start small and think scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do believe it's up to this next city council to take a look at this charter and start to address some of the efficiencies and changes that I had wished the um, the charter commit the charter review commission had um, originally addressed. So we will do that, and I I hope that the community will be pleased with where we're headed with this particular uh, charter and our commission form of government. Oh, thank you for saying that. That uh, and again, very informed uh, response. <laughs> all right, uh, that's a, that's all the time we have today. I want you back again tomorrow. I'm Always to happy to come back. More about the Smart City Initiative. Yes. Uh, FCC.org. Get your voices heard on this. This is very, very important issue. It's called net neutrality, and as you can tell, our city of Saratoga here is ahead of the curve again. Michelle, happy holidays to you. And to you too. Thanks for coming. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.